All right, the amazing symbolism there with verse 16, the Iraqi dinar, this unihorn. We're even going to talk about how this unihorn on the unicorn is spiraling. And this is going to be perfectly related to this spiraling Kundalini crooked serpent. It's the very same symbolism of this piercing horn coming from the top of the head, the symbolism for the spiraling. There's an inverse of actions when we talk about spiraling. There's spiraling outward, and then there's spiraling inward. The inward spiraling is where we find the pool, the gravity grasp of all things, pulling things ever inward and onward to the perfection, to the paradise of all things, because God is at the center of all things. And we find this directly out of the words of Jesus Christ's mouth. So... There's an inverse of actions. This, the serpent is trying to spiral outward from the spirit realm and enter into the material realm. That's the opposite direction in which we're to go to achieve perfection. All right? That's just a little bit of that very easy, but yet, in a way, scientific understanding of what we're talking about. And I say scientific just loosely, but there's a lot of science behind it. So in reading further down, I'm going to show you this letter code or this number code, how it connects with what we're going to see in Jeremiah. Now look, verse 22, describing Dan. And of Dan, he said, Dan is a lion's whelp. He shall leap from Bashan. All right. Dan is this judge being prophesied in the end times. Now he's being symbolized as a young lion. In other words, one of these sons of God, the descendancy, and also coming from the land of of giants. All right, verse 22. Now, who is Dan? Well, this is it. Jeremiah chapter 6, starting here at verse 22. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, a people cometh from the north country, and a great nation shall be raised from the sides of the earth. The sides of the earth? That's the pit. This great nation coming from the north is the exact same description in Joel 2. They shall lay hold on bow and spear. They are cruel and have no mercy. Their voice roareth like the sea. Now remember that noise that was further compared in symbolism with this fire, smoke, and brimstone. Now the abyss in which Apollyon is considered to be in is also the bottomless pit, which is synonymous with this hell fire, but also the abyss is synonymous with the depth of the sea, interexchangeable. So their voice is roaring from the abyss in which they come, but it's armed with the hell fire of the doctrines of Apollyon. And they ride upon horses? Well, that's no secret anymore, is it? Because the snorting of the horses was heard from Dan, set in array as men, Set in array as men, which means all the symbolism, the serpent, the lion, the horses, the scorpion, all of that is going to be summed up as their identity in this battle array of these coming men that are coming for war. For war against thee, O daughter of Zion. There's your proof. 100% undeniable proof that the army of Jotu is wicked. And that their king is Apollyon, and they have come to do the devil's work and not the father's. 777 AEJ. Friend, please don't lead the people astray. It is obvious that you and many people like yourself are on the side of false Israel even connected most possibly with that of Freemasonry and I judge you not I extend the very same love to you and I have no problems with you and I hope you have no problems with me but as we're all sent to do and guided by the spirit is to give the people the truth that is the truth this army of Joel 2 is the locust we have heard the fame thereof our hands wax feeble Anguish hath taken hold of us in pain as a woman of travail. 